You do not need high-powered, expensive lighting gear to do high-quality boudoir portraiture or any type of portraiture, really. In this video, I'm going to show you what I've used to create beautiful, professional boudoir photography with basic flash units. Now, I'm not saying that high-powered studio strobes aren't useful. I mean, I often prefer them in certain situations. But what I am saying is you can still do the job with lighter, more compact gear and still get great results. First, let's address the question of using flash at all. Do you need to use flash? Why not just use natural light? Well, natural light is beautiful, but it has its limitations. I mean, usually using natural light means using window light. And when you're working with paying clients, you don't want to be at the mercy of weather conditions that make the light unusable or unpredictable. Window light also means you've got to get things done at the right time of day. In the winter months out here on the East Coast, you can run out of daylight by 4.30 or 5 o'clock. And there might be privacy concerns too, like your client may not be comfortable posing in front of a window. So yeah, window light's beautiful, but flash offers several advantages. You get to totally control the look of the light and the environment no matter what time of day, no matter what the weather conditions are, and your client doesn't have to pose near a window. I encourage photographers to become proficient with flash, even if you're already good with using natural light. Again, you don't want to be at the mercy of the outside lighting conditions. Let's talk about boudoir lighting strategies. I've said it a million times, I like to keep my lighting simple. And this is definitely true with my boudoir photography. You know, why complicate things unnecessarily? So when using a minimalistic lighting approach to boudoir, which is my typical strategy, I try to get away with one light if I can and two lights if necessary. Rarely will I use more than two lights. I believe that if you have less gear to concern yourself with during a shoot, you can focus more on your subject. Uh, you know, things like building rapport and posing, stealing directly with your subject. If you've got a lot of lights and settings to deal with, a lot of your attention is going to have to be on that stuff instead of the person in front of you. And by the way, what we're talking about here is off-camera flash. We're not using the flash mounted to your camera because while that can create some looks that work, we've got a lot more options with off-camera flash. And that is flash lighting that's located away from the camera and generally off the camera to subject axis. Lighting gear. All right, what kind of lights do I use in minimal setups? Look, something as simple as a couple of speed lights and shoot through umbrellas is going to do the job. A softbox is also, you know, a nice upgrade to the umbrella. So my setup's going to look something like this. You want a decent quality speed light with plenty of power. And you can pick these up for between 150 and 250 here in the U.S. Of course, the top of the line models from Nikon and Canon and places like that, they're going to work too. But yeah, just a good quality speed light. Going to need a trigger, some way to sync and trigger your flash units. If you're using a third party flash like the ones from Godox or Westcott, uh, they've got triggers that mount directly to your camera's hot shoe, and those will control the flash units in your setups remotely. I have some other videos that explain how that works. Just check the links in the description and go and watch those videos. You're gonna need a flash bracket. These are sometimes called flash brackets or swivel adapters or umbrella adapters. These basically hold the flash and allow you to connect a flash umbrella or softbox modifier to the flash. Uh, and there are several types. I've been using this type called an S-type or the S2 for a while now. These allow you to mount an umbrella or a softbox with a Bowens type connector. Uh, that type of connector or speed ring is really popular right now. It's called Bowens. Modifiers. Uh, get a white translucent umbrella. You'll place it so that the flash shoots through it toward the subject. That's why we call this a shoot through umbrella. And get one for each flash and maybe get a collapsible softbox if you want. Just a little more control over the light. You're also going to need a light stand for each light. Uh, you're going to have to place your flash and modifier somewhere, right? You place it onto a light stand. And the light stand it just holds all this gear up and then you can place the light anywhere you need it. And you can adjust the height and uh, the flash bracket uh, is gonna allow you to adjust the angle of light. So you have a lot of 
uh, variations on your lighting height and angle once you get it onto the light stand. All right, so that's the setup. Uh, and really, this is all surprisingly easy to set up once you've done it a couple of times. As far as lighting setups go, how you use your lighting, uh, that's really the whole thing, right? This is something you'll have to learn with some good tutorials or courses, but you'll ultimately have to just gain some experience by practicing, okay? Practice is how you apply anything that you've learned. It's how you really start understanding uh, the way things work. This is how you're going to get good at lighting. I have about 25 lighting and posing setups that I consider my standard go-to setups. These are detailed in my courses, but I can show you some of the basic concepts here. All right, so first, start with one light, all right? Practice with one light and get really good at using it to create images like this. Using one light tends to result in more dramatic pictures because you're going to have light on one side and shadow on the other. I mean, that just makes sense, right? Often, uh, you're not going to have a lot of fill lighting to reduce contrast in a setup like this. And, you know, it really depends on the modifier that you're using and how much light is bouncing around the room. Uh, but generally, you're going to get some nice classic lighting and shadows to work with with a one light setup. So in general, you want to position the light about 45 degrees off of the camera to subject axis. And you want to have that light directed sort of downward towards your subject so that the shadows fall naturally across the face and the form. You almost never want light sending the shadows upward because that looks unnatural and often very unappealing, all right? Uh, you can add in a second light for things like creating a rim light effect or a hair light effect. I often use a second light for double duty uh, with boudoir as a background splash of light that also strikes the subject for a highlight or rim light effect. Rim light, by the way, is also often called a kicker light. And there are lots of creative ways to use one or two lights. I'm not going to cover them all here, but just realize that you can do things like strong backlighting for effects like this. Uh, and if you decide to move on to bodyscapes and figure photography, lots of times boudoir clients will ask if you can do something like this for them. For pictures like this, you can use one or two lights for effects like this. And, you know, despite what you might hear about soft lighting, you know, always being the goal, hard light and high contrast effects have their place too, especially if you're looking for some creative noir effects like this. And this was created with direct flash, you know, meaning no umbrella or soft box was used. It's just a flash hitting the subject directly. So good boudoir photography doesn't require lots of expensive equipment. Uh, you can get great results with a couple basic flash units and some simple modifiers like umbrellas or soft boxes. So put a little lighting kit together and start practicing. Uh, find some good instruction that doesn't require you to invest thousands of dollars in gear. You know, learning to create good work with minimal gear is really what's going to put you way ahead of the game. Uh, that's about all I've got for you today. See you next time.